we're going to be looking at a capacitor charging through a resistor. We have an uncharged capacitor and a resistor connected to a voltage supply and the charge stored on the capacitor increases according to this equation. And this is the graph of the charge stored on the capacitor with time t while it's charging. And it will reach a final charge of Q0 when the capacitor is fully charged. The time constant, which is equal to the product of the resistance and capacitance of the circuit. And when the time is equal to the time constant, then this part of the expression becomes e to the minus 1, which is equal to 0 0.37. And so this charge stored on the capacitor will equal 63% of the final value. And so the time constant for a capacitor that is charging is the time taken for the charge to reach 63% of its final value. And we can obtain the time constant from the graph by finding the value of time when the charge stored on the capacitor is equal to 63% of the final value. The potential difference across a capacitor is directly proportional to the charge stored on the capacitor. And so if we take the expression for charge and divide both sides by capacitance C, then we get this voltage expression. And this is the graph showing the voltage across the capacitor, how it changes with time t. And again, we see the final voltage on the capacitor will equal V0 when the capacitor is fully charged. To determine the potential difference across the resistor, then we need to use Kirchhoff's second law, where the voltage from the power supply V0 is equal to the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor. So the voltage across the resistor is equal to V0 minus the voltage across the capacitor. And we've already seen the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. And so if we substitute for Vc into this equation for Vr, we see that the voltage across the resistor follows an exponential decay. And remember, an exponential decay follows this constant ratio property in equal intervals of time the voltage will fall by the same fraction, the same ratio. The current in the circuit is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the, its resistance. And so if we take the expression for the voltage across the resistor and divide both sides by R, we get this current expression. So you can see that the current in the circuit follows an exponential decay. I'm now going to go through the proof of this equation for the charge stored on the capacitor while it's charging. It's not a proof you need to know for the exam, so it's only for those who are interested. So the current is equal to the rate of flow of charge, which is dq dt. And we've already seen it's equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance. We also know that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the voltage of the power supply minus the voltage across the capacitor. And the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the charge stored on the capacitor divided by its capacitance. So if we substitute for VR and then VC, we get this equation. When the capacitor is fully charged, the charge stored on the capacitor Q0 will equal C V0. And so the equation becomes this. If we then rearrange the equation to put all the charge terms on one side and bring dt on the other side of the equation, we get this, 
where we can now integrate this expression with respect to charge Q with the limits of 0 to Q and we can integrate 1 divided by RC with respect to time T with the limits of 0 to time T and we have these limits because when time equals 0 the charge stored on capacitor is 0 and at time T the charge stored on capacitor is Q so integrating both sides gives us this and if we substitute in the limits for Q we get this and so if we put all the log terms together we get this to get rid of the log term in this expression we need to times both sides by exponential to get this and we need to rearrange the equation to make Q the subject and so we get the expression for the charge stored on the capacitor while it's charging.